Elon Musk says making life multiplanetary is humanity's greatest challenge. But can SpaceX really turn Mars into our second home? Or is it just science fiction? In this video, we're diving into the plans, the challenges, and the cutting-edge technologies that could make this dream a reality. We've been gathering every snippet of information over the weeks to keep you up to date in this video. We've already published a three-part series on our channel on how a manned mission to Mars could work, and have also created further videos with challenges that need to be overcome, such as the increased radiation on Mars and the lack of a global magnetic field. What are SpaceX's plans? On September the 7th, 2024, Elon Musk announced that the first Starships, yes, that's right, plural, will set off unmanned for the Red Planet in two years. If this mission is successful, the first humans will follow in four years' time. The aim is to have a self-sufficient city on Mars within 20 years, i.e. by 2050, so that humanity would not die out in one fell swoop if an asteroid hit the Earth or a supervolcano erupted. Why is there only a launch window to Mars every two years? The reason why there is only an optimal launch window of two to three weeks for missions to Mars every two years or so is due to the relative orbits of Earth and Mars around the Sun. The window is called opposition, when Mars and Earth are on the same side of the Sun and the distance between the two planets is minimal. In order to consume as little fuel as possible, space probes use a Hohmann transfer orbit, an energy-efficient elliptical orbit. This is only possible when Earth and Mars are in favorable positions in relation to each other. This position occurs approximately every 26 months, as Earth and Mars move around the Sun at different speeds. The Earth needs 365 days, Mars 687 days, to orbit the Sun. Launching during the optimal window saves significant amounts of fuel and reduces travel time. What technical challenges is SpaceX currently working on? A critical problem is the heat shield, which is required for a successful landing of the Starship on Mars. As the Martian atmosphere is very thin and consists mainly of carbon dioxide, the heat shield is a critical problem. During atmospheric entry, the heat shield of a spacecraft must withstand extreme heating caused by the compression of atmospheric gases and friction. This intense heat can cause certain materials in the heat shield to break down into their atomic components. For example, ablative heat shields often release gases such as atomic carbon and oxygen as part of their design to dissipate heat and create a protective gas layer, known as a boundary layer, that helps shield the spacecraft. However, atomic oxygen, which is highly reactive, presents unique challenges. When produced during atmospheric entry, atomic oxygen can react with the surface materials of the heat shield, potentially leading to accelerated material degradation. This reactivity also contributes to increased surface heating due to the release of energy during chemical reactions. If not properly mitigated, this can reduce the heat shield's effectiveness over time. For SpaceX's Starship, the heat shield could be composed of high-temperature-resistant ceramic or metallic tiles. These materials are engineered to withstand both the extreme thermal and chemical environments of atmospheric entry, including exposure to atomic oxygen. To mitigate the effects of atomic oxygen, these materials may include oxidation-resistant coatings or use advanced composites that remain stable under such conditions. Solving this problem is extremely challenging work on the edge of current science and engineering. Ultra-high temperature ceramics, UHTCs, an active regenerative cooling or carbon nanotube or graphene-based composites could be part of the solution. An interesting solution could also come from space, more precisely, from the interstellar meteor IM-1. As Avi Loeb from Harvard University wrote in an article on medium.com, the material strength of IM-1 was unprecedented among all previously known meteors from the solar system. Since IM-1 maintained its integrity down to the low atmosphere at an altitude of 19 kilometers, despite its high speed, this implies that the yield material strength of IM-1 was a thousand times higher and tougher than all known iron meteorites. What role does the evolution of the Starship play? Making life multiplanetary is fundamentally a cost per ton to Mars problem, as Elon Musk wrote on X. SpaceX is working intensively on improvements to the Starship. The current version is already twice as powerful as the Saturn V moon rocket 
and version 3 of the Starship, which should be ready in a year's time, is even three times as powerful. At $3 million, the cost of launching a Starship is also manageable and already represents an enormous cost reduction compared to disposable rockets such as the SLS. The enormous improvements and streamlining of the Raptor engine are also helpful in reaching Mars as quickly as possible. If the Starship is successfully refueled in Earth orbit in the future, everything will be in place for an unmanned Mars mission. However, there are still many challenges for a manned mission, which we discuss in more detail in this video. What is Marslink? Similar to Starlink on Earth, Marslink would consist of numerous satellites that enable communication with the surface of Mars. Like the latest version of Starlink satellites, these would also utilize laser communication. Space lasers allow satellites to communicate directly with each other in orbit without relying on ground stations, creating a mesh network in space. This improves data transfer speeds and reduces latency. Additionally, these satellites could serve as relay stations for communication with Earth. In addition to communication, these satellites would also have additional functions, such as global imaging and monitoring, to detect sandstorms at an early stage or even reduce the danger posed by meteor showers, ensuring that astronauts on the surface can take cover in time. What role does the Tesla robot play on Mars? We've already discussed this topic on our video about the radiation challenges on the surface of Mars. To enable human life on Mars with today's technology, an army of robots is needed to build underground facilities, establish power supplies and communications, and farm on Mars before even a human has set foot on Mars. If the astronauts were exposed to radiation on Mars for months on end, they would very quickly develop cancer and lose their eyesight. This is why an underground Mars base is advantageous at the beginning. What form of government will there be on Mars? Considering Elon Musk's reverence for ancient Rome and his tweet stating that governing Mars will be up to the Martians, it's evident that he's already given thought to this subject. Musk has also mentioned that a human settlement on Mars could represent a second chance to establish a better system of governance. Musk is a proponent of simplicity in laws and has emphasized that the legal system on Mars should be more straightforward and streamlined. He suggested that laws should be easy to understand, written in clear and concise language, and designed to be difficult to enact but easy to repeal. He envisions a form of governance that combines elements of direct democracy, where decisions are made without representatives and possibly a strong central leadership. Interestingly, Werner von Braun predicted in the 1950s that Elon would be the ruler of Mars, an idea that's gained new attention in light of Musk's ambitions. Conclusion SpaceX's vision for Mars is not just a dream, but a bold step for humanity's future. With each milestone, we get closer to answering the age-old question, can humanity survive and thrive beyond Earth? Whether it's through groundbreaking technology or revolutionary governance ideas, this mission could define the next chapter of human history. Let us know in the comments, do you think SpaceX will succeed in making Mars our second home?